strategically, what we're doing here is if we build up a local attention engine, this Facebook page, right, that has five, 10, 15,000 local eyeballs that are on our page all the time, wouldn't that be the same audience that local businesses are trying to attract? Welcome to Pipelineology, the business to business podcast for agencies, consultants, coaches, and businesses looking to build a pipeline of hot prospects ready to buy their products and services. Never wonder where your next client is coming from. To learn more about our strategies, services, and for resources on building your sales pipeline, visit Pipelineology.com. Now, on to the show. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Pipelineology. I'm your host, Gary Ruplinger, and today I am pleased to be joined by Drew Griffin, the co-founder of GroupX.io, Everlinks.io, Delicious Marketing, and Delicious Marketing Hacks. Drew, welcome to the show. Gary, it's really a privilege to be hanging out today, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to come out and, and hang out with you on your podcast here. Congratulations on the launch, and uh, I, I see that you're you're gaining momentum, and uh, the shows have been fantastic, so congratulations on that. Oh, well, thank you. My pleasure to have you. So I'm, I'm definitely excited for today's topic, as we're going to be talking about Facebook groups. Uh, but before we jump into that, uh, for anybody at home who's not familiar with you, Ch Drew, can you just share a little bit of your background, kind of how you got here, your story? Sure. So uh, it's kind of a weird story. <laughs> um, I spent about 27 years in healthcare as a hyperbaric wound care nurse, um, which has absolutely nothing to do with marketing or anything like that, other than towards the end of my healthcare career. Um, I saw an opportunity to uh, help the the population that I was working with in, in a little bit of a different way. Um, it was around the advent of the iPhone. And uh, so this is what, 2007, 2009, something, somewhere along those lines. And uh, I started to uh, get the entrepreneur bug of trying to come up with something that would serve the population that I was working with, which were pri primarily uh, people that suffer from diabetes, diabetic wounds, um, gunshot wounds, pretty chronic, disgusting things, right? Th un unfortunate situations in people's lives where they were <clears throat> just um, having a hard time uh, healing and that sort of thing. And I saw an opportunity with the advent of the iPhone where there was a convergence of information and uh, medicine. And I decided to develop an app to specifically help diabetics uh, manage their, their, uh, their diabetes, specifically manage and track their blood glucoses and their blood values and their wound status and all that other kind of stuff. And uh, ended up developing and launching an application that served that population at the same time served a lot of physicians and people that were in healthcare to better uh, transfer and translate information back and forth between the provider as well as uh, the patient. And within the first couple of weeks, we experienced about 30,000 downloads of that app. And this is at a time when <clears throat> there weren't that many apps on the app store. Um, so uh, I saw um, pretty much the end of my healthcare career happen right before my eyes as um, I realized my time in the clinic, the clinic aspect where, you know, we were spending, you know, 10 to 16 hours a day working with patients. And uh, it was very taxing on the body as well as the mind psychologically. You see people at their worst every single day, right? And um, I was very good at that, uh, but, you know, it was, it's a dirty job and, you know, it was rewarding to see people heal and sometimes get the comfort that they need. But then when I saw the opportunity uh, to, to help people and touch people in a little bit of a different way, uh, there was no way that I would be able to see 30,000 patients in a week to two weeks period of time. However, through technology, I was able to uh, transverse that and start to touch more people's lives by way of this technology. And that was pretty cool. Uh, so I realized my time in the clinic was over and then I transitioned into uh, more 
uh, emerging technologies and marketing and learning to um, you know, touch even more people's lives by using this little thing called the internet and mobile devices and that sort of thing. And uh, so began my career in marketing and uh, software development and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, here we are a number of years later and things are thriving and uh, I, I couldn't uh, have be more pleased with the direction of my business and being able to really connect with people, develop relationships and make a difference in their lives through technology and marketing. Oh, wow. So are you a, a self-taught developer then? Or is that something you also, okay. I am a self-taught developer, always been a tinkerer, always messing around with new emerging technology, testing things and seeing what works and what doesn't work. And and uh, I think sometimes that's the best way. The best way to learn is to dive in and, you know, test and see what things are going to, you know, see how things work for you and your business. Well, that's that's a really cool story. So. So how did um, how did this all kind of then? I guess you kind of shared how the pivot worked. Then, what uh, what was it that drew you to like the the kind of marketing side of things? Yeah, I've, I've always been interested in uh, in in entrepreneurship. My father was an entrepreneur, did all kinds of different things, and I, I guess had a I had a great teacher that way and learning about how to uh, bring value to communities and, and to your, uh, to your customers and your clientele and that sort of thing. And, uh, I just learned from, I think pretty much the, the core of that I learned from, from my father. Um, and, you know, getting into healthcare, I I was really interested in just helping people. And then the, the emergence of, of this type of technology, I've always been, uh, you know, a nerd or a geek, you know, always, you know, messing around with gaming and, and computers in general. And, you know, way back when learning to, you know, do a little bit of programming here and there. And then uh, realizing um, having a family and, and the amount of time that I was spending away from the family that maybe there was something there, right? So, you know, developing and putting that application out there wasn't necessarily for the money at first. It was really to see if I can create a tool that could truly help the people solve a problem that I was, you know, the, the, the population. So then I guess just the, mer- the, the emergence of the technology and just being fascinated by being able to communicate with people over a computer and over this new internet technology on a, on a mobile device, I realized very quickly that these devices were going to be in almost everyone's pocket and, and they are. Um, you know, thank goodness to, you know, the, the pioneers of the world of Steve Jobs and, and all the, you know, the, the people that came before him with mobile technology, whatever. Um, just finding ways to leverage that technology and being able to communicate more effectively. Um, if, if there's a way to actually help local businesses, if there's a way to help uh, businesses in general uh, get a better result from, you know, trying to communicate with their constituency and their customers, that seemed very intriguing and very appealing. Um, and I, I guess part of the backstory is also a little bit of sense of humor. And the, the story is not unlike a lot of people who work a nine to five or work jobs and stuff like that and just don't enjoy what they're doing. Um, I did enjoy what I was doing for for a number of years, but it, it caught up to me. And compounded by that, there was uh, unfortunately a supervisor of mine who was just not very nice to me. Uh, she was a manager and ended up really just riding riding me uh, pretty hard in terms of you know uh, you know getting uh, reports and things of that nature done. And it was a, a tumultuous relationship to say the least. Uh, but the the humorous part of it, and I guess this is kind of the the fantasy that a lot of people have when they want to quit their job and that sort of thing. Um, I, I actually did that. It was kind of fun. Um, I went into the to the job, and and uh, this was after successfully launching the application and and uh, having some uh, some companies uh, interested in acquiring the application and the software. I realized, you know, that again that, that time was pretty much over and having to deal and punch the clock and all that kind of stuff. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's just, it wasn't for me anymore. And um, the opportunity to move on and really 
see if I could do it, you know, see if I could do it beyond a one hit wonder uh, was always something in the back of my mind and see the, the opportunity to go out and serve even more people with some of the things that I've learned and make them that much stronger inside the community uh, was prevalent. So I took the shot and, you know, I walk, walked into, into work and uh, said, I, Hey, I've got some good news and some bad news. And then uh, typically when you get something like that, the, the manager or the boss typically knows that you're resigning. And uh, I, I think the realization that a lot of the heavy lifting that was being done at work was suddenly beca- going to become the burden of, uh, of the manager so we ended up going into the medical lounge where, you know, the physicians and my colleagues and whatnot were there. And uh, she said, uh, oh, okay, so you're leaving, right? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm resigning. And, you know, everybody kind of turned around. So a lot of my colleagues and friends and uh, people that I worked with for a number of years were kind of stunned by it. And uh, then she asked what the good news when I said, good news was, and I said, well, I just saved $500 on my car insurance by switching to Geico. <laughs> um, the, yeah, the, I mean, the jaws dropped and, you know, I just picked up my my stuff and, and left. It was, it was pretty much at the end of the day, but it was a mic drop moment that, um, you know, I, I had to take the moment. I, I didn't mean to embarrass her, but she had really made um, the tolerance of my job that much less than in that it really had to be. And uh, so yeah, I moved on and started working in, in marketing and, you know, uh, emerging technologies, leveraging some of the things that are out there just to do what we all want to do. And that's provide value to our customers and, um, you know, do a better job of, of connecting with customers and clients and then ultimately making sales and growing businesses. Uh, so that's kind of what we transitioned into. And, and uh, a number of years later, my, my business partner and I, uh, David Calafiori, who's my business partner at Delicious Marketing and pretty much everything that you've mentioned, uh, Group X and um, Everlinks. And we've got some other software development uh, projects in, in the works right now. Uh, we were... W- w- we were kind of competitors in Pennsylvania. He's uh, in the Western part of, of, um, of Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh. I'm like near the Philadelphia region. And uh, we crossed paths a lot and we said, look, you know, we're having the same challenges and whatnot. Why don't we see if we can tackle this? And uh, we started to put our heads together, started to come up with processes that uh, helped us connect with even more customers and clients, kind of get past the gatekeeper, uh, leveraging, you know, uh, platforms like Facebook, Facebook groups, um, and uh, Facebook pages to do it in a little bit of a different way that uh, doesn't have a lot of friction. Right? And it just allows us to create what we call asset-based, uh, asset-based businesses. Uh, so yeah, fast forward, this is where we are today. Nice. So I guess that kind of leads right into the next part then. What is it about Facebook groups that, uh, I guess, what are kind of the benefits of them? Um, are they are they still relevant right now? Oh, yeah. I think they're even more relevant than, than they were when they first came out. And what we have to understand on Facebook is that, you know, it's a pay-to-play game, uh, or at least it's everything that um, is introduced uh, initially, um, that's kind of open and, and available for everyone to try. As you adopt it, it becomes a lo- that much more um, of a of a profit center for Facebook, or at least it's uh, at least it's a benefit to those users, Facebook users. Eventually, the ad space starts to run out. And that's where Facebook uh, groups are going. Um, You're going to start to see things where the availability to communicate and advertise in front of certain groups and things of that nature is is going to be a great opportunity. I guess it really depends on on how you look at it. But in our opinion, uh, a lot of activity, a lot of communication, a lot of learning happens within groups. And if you haven't been affected by, you know, uh, the organic reach on Facebook, even on personal profiles, uh, as well as Facebook pages, um, that's coming to groups as well. So learning how to navigate, learning how to get your group to be engaged in the content that's being provided there uh, can be a huge, huge advantage 
to those that run groups, as well as people that are participating inside of groups. I, I find the opportunity for discovery, research and development, um, developing um, interesting relationships, strategic relationships with people who are um, fantastic, you know, in, in, in their own markets, in their own worlds. It's, a, it's an incredible discovery location that has a lot of hidden benefits. And, uh, you know, for us as a business, it's really powered uh, revenue. It's powered relationships, uh, JV opportunities, JV meaning joint venture, and uh, the ability to discover and celebrate uh, members that are in our group that are doing interesting things. And um, that's, been, that's been a very uh, big game changer in our business. Well, that's great. So if somebody's, I guess, looking at listening to this and saying, okay, that's cool, but is this, I guess, where do I start? Like, how do I, because I, you start from zero. So how do I go from nothing to, you know, opportunities and, and revenue growth from a, from a group? I know it's a kind of a big question to tackle. So I guess pick and choose where you want to start with that one. Sure. So, you know what, we'll, we'll start with um, working outside of the group at first. And I think this is a huge opportunity and maybe the golden nugget that a lot of your listeners may uh, look at in, a, in an interesting way. Uh, Facebook pages are an amazing way to grow an audience rapidly. Um, David and I teach a course called uh, Local Attention Engine. And the premise behind local attention engine is, you know, let's just say we're speaking to local marketers or any type of business that has a local presence. It could be chiropractors, it could be an auto dealership, it could be, you know, a, a local um, mom and pop shop, right? When we think local, we're thinking businesses that typically are attracting local customers and clients to their brick and mortar business, or they conduct business most of the time locally, uh, but they also have a regional or national presence, or they can have a regional or national presence because of the internet, right? So what we had um, experienced in our agency was a challenge that we were competing with a lot of, um, I guess the old terminology is like me too businesses, right? Or pretty much anybody um, that could get a business card made up can hang a shingle out. They can call themselves a social media agency or a direct uh, digital marketing agency or anything like that. Th those were our competitors, right? Uh, the ability for us to help local businesses get more customers get more leads and generate more sales from the internet was basically what our agency was doing. And you don't particularly need to have a degree. You don't need to have a license to do any of this kind of stuff, yet the, the market was flooded. And even though we were working with local clients, we actually experienced people walking through the door and pitching their services while we're in the meeting with the customer and the client going over statistics, going over campaigns, all that kind of stuff, only to be interrupted several times throughout the day. And we realized that, hey, if this was happening with this one client, it was actually happening with several or all of our clients, right? It was just, there was a, a fierce competition. Nothing wrong with that at all. You know, people need to sell. People need to connect with businesses. They need to get past the gate, gatekeeper and that sort of thing. Uh, but we also realized that there was a threat. Uh, to our business. So we decided to kind of work in a little bit of a different way. And we realized that, hey, what if we had businesses coming to us instead of us having to go to them all the time uh, to actually go out there and sell? Of course, you know, sell is a two-way street and, you know, you can have people coming to you and, and still pick up your services and, uh, you know, uh, subscribe to your software and subscribe to your agency services and, uh, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but if you were able to really own the attention, if you were able to own the entire area, uh, you wouldn't have to work as hard. So here's, here's the long and, uh, the, or the, the short uh, version of this. Essentially, what we do is we create a uh, local Facebook page that serves a local area, right? So in, in my case, we'll call it Pottstown, Pennsylvania, right? Which is a, a suburb of Philadelphia, it has about 20 to 25,000 people that live in that particular area. 
So what we did is we created a Facebook page that served the local area with news and events and things that were happening locally. If you think about it psychologically, when you live in a certain area, people are selfish, right? They are interested in what affects them immediately. That means local news, local weather, local traffic, local sports, all that kind of stuff. They're typically genuinely interested in what's happening that's going to affect them, what's happening in the schools, what's happening in the, univer the local university, that sort of stuff, what's happening with local government. So if we were able to serve up that news and serve up that information in such a way that curated a bunch of content, the best content from the local area and provided all within one location, right? Unbiased, you've got uh, news from the left, you've got news from the right, you've got things going right down the middle, everything is happening at the local school, that sort of thing. What would happen? So what we found is by leveraging Facebook, we can basically pay Facebook to build out these pages and capture the very local attention that we were trying to attract in the first place. Strategically, what we're doing here is if we build up a local attention engine, this Facebook page, right, that has five, 10, 15,000 local eyeballs that are on our page all the time, wouldn't that be the same audience that local businesses are trying to attract? Well, the answer was absolutely yes. And what happened was we started building out these little uh, pieces of real estate, digital real estate on Facebook called local attention engines or local media assets and effectively competed with local news outlets in such a way that we served up really good information. Uh, we served up a bunch of memes, right? So memes are new, the new <laughs> Sunday funnies and uh, people just loved it. So our growth was very, very quick. We built up an audience, you know, two, three, four thousand people within a week, right? So that's essentially 25% of our local area. And then we would just continuously stimulate building out that audience. Well, along came Facebook Live, right? So then what we started to do is we connected with the local Chamber of Commerce and we offered them to do a show on our page, right? Basically said, hey, why don't you bring your guests, your, um, your constituency from the Chamber of Commerce interview them and give that as a benefit so they get the attention of our local audience right back on their business by doing a show right on our our Facebook page, which then translated into us having a great relationship with the Chamber of Commerce. And then we transition into Facebook groups, right? So now we have all this attention. What are we going to do with it? Well, we want to serve up information with a local group. So a group around uh, business in general, not necessarily our business and our vertical, like just marketing. We wanna learn about people who are doing advertising, people that are doing other th interesting things in the community. We wanna feature them. And as psychology, you know, the psycho psychological aspect of this is they don't really care about you. They care about themselves. They care about getting more information about themselves and their business out there. So leveraging a Facebook group in order to do that gives us that permission, gives us that opportunity to deliver results in advance by bringing them into the group, featuring them amongst their peers, other big people that are inside the business, at the same time being able to develop relationships. And of course, there's some technical things that are happening behind the scenes. We've got a tool that helps us uh, connect with them that much better, you know, grabbing email addresses and the follow-up process and all that kind of stuff. So the Facebook group does something pretty amazing. It allows them to uh, market themselves. It allows us to network with these individuals inside this group, learn about these businesses, and be a referral source to them at the same time. Well, once you start to see, once they start to see that, hey, you're putting thousands and thousands and thousands of people in front of them, where you're syndicating that content to your pages and that sort of thing, uh, having opportunity to secure that relationship inside of a group and then take it outside the group onto a page. Well, now you've got something that is truly valuable to them where you've got the ability to capture leads, you've got the ability to kind of stimulate uh, the, the community with contests and that sort of thing. There are some strategic things that you can do tactically that makes it very, very appealing and 
expediates and amplifies the results that people are looking to, you know, social media like LinkedIn and Facebook for those types of results. They want referrals. They want to be able to do business. They just don't know how to do it in, in the most efficacious way that's tasteful and actually delivers results. Okay. Wow. There's, there's a lot to unpack in that. Thanks for, thanks for sharing all those. So I guess, would you mind getting into maybe some of the, uh, maybe some of the strategic or tactical side of actually growing a group? Say, I've, I've got a group and I, I need more people in it. It's, I've got a hundred people or something, maybe let's say, sure. and I, but I want more of my audience in there. What are some of the things that on a day-to-day basis I should be doing that will contribute to its growth? Yeah, well, consistency and being transparent, right? So you did it as part of this introduction process of bringing me on to your podcast. You're actually doing that. You're actually doing the very tactic, the very thing that actually works, right? Getting into, sliding into their direct message by way of Facebook Messenger has been an incredible way to connect with people. We recommend using the microphone uh, or the voicemail feature inside of a direct message. Uh, when you go in there on your mobile device, you just hit that microphone button and you can leave a 60 second, uh, 60 second voice message, right? It's, and the reason I suggest this is going about it the way that you did, reaching out and uh, you know, asking to be a part of something and to being able to feature somebody is a, an incredible tactic. It's actually the tactic that we use all the time on these Facebook pages. So as I mentioned before, building up a page, um, you know, if somebody came to you and said, hey, you know, Gary, we, we've got, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the editor of GQ Magazine or ESPN Mag- Entrepreneur Magazine or Forbes. We love what you're doing with your podcast. We would love to feature you on the cover of our magazine. What are you going to say? Well, heck yes. Can we do it right. tomorrow? <laughs> exactly. Right. So be very uh, complimentary in your approach to people. If you're looking to build a group of business minded individuals, a local group of, of businesses, a fantastic way to do that is simply go into, uh, you know, go to their Facebook page and send them a voice message. Here's the thing about the voice message. It's different. It's different. It's just different enough than most of the messages that they receive on a consistent basis, you know, people spamming them and, and, and sending it's technically spam that we're sending as well. But if you go about it in a way that's just a little bit different, sending a video or sending an audio message, it's just different enough that they're going to tap play, right? And they're going to listen to that message. And if the message elates them, and, and endears them to what you're trying to do, trying to be inclusive and invite them to be a part of your group. There's nothing particularly uh, frightening or fearful about a Facebook group. And if you come about it in such a way as like, hey, I want to learn more about your business. I think you'd be a great fit for our group. I would love to feature you with an interview inside this group. So meet more people get to know you, get to like you, get to trust you, learn more about your business. I'd love to feature you inside our group. Once you start to develop that relationship, most of the time that's going to work. You know, I'd say 80 to 90% of the time, you're going to get a favorable response. And then the other 10 to 20% typically come around later on down the road when they see that you're serious, they show that you're consistent and that you're building up a business or building up a, a business group that isn't uh, just pitch, pitch, pitch. It's about, hey, how can we serve our community? How can we grow our businesses collectively? And how can how can we leverage each other's ideas to promote each other, right? There's no reason that you have to be competitive all the time. You can be very supportive and, and find common ground inside these Facebook groups. So that's the benefit to them, right? And on the other side uh, of running one of these Facebook groups, <clears throat> as an admin, as the leader inside inside this group, you get all the favor, you get the attention, effectively you become a chamber of commerce, right? You get to be the connector inside your community. You get to introduce people, you get to become, you get the, all the authority, the celebrity, the credibility, the recognition, because you're engaged inside this group. Um, the more consistent you are with that and the more giving of yourself to promote other people, 
the more recognition they're going to come back to you. It comes back to you tenfold pretty much every single time. At least that's what we have found in our groups that we're running. And uh, it, it's just an, it's just a fantastic way to build out an amazing Rolodex of people that will eventually do business with you in some capacity. I think that's a, a brilliant strategy there is to bring people in, but don't don't make them feel like this is where they're going to get pitched and actually make it a real place of community where information is shared freely and build up people who you know, are in similar industries to you to give more value to everybody in the group. I think that's, uh, I, th- I think that's brilliant because like you said, you know, it, it, it builds up everybody and including, including you, even if you are not the one doing, every, you know, saying everything and posting everything, if you let other people do it and you're, you're the leader of the group or you're the admin, as you said, now, you know, that some of that just kind of naturally trickles over to you since it's, you know, since you're in there. Sure thing. It's, it's been, it's been fantastic. You'll identify people who could, who could be moderators for your group and essentially run the whole thing for you and you end up getting all the benefits anyway. That's uh, I mean, that's, that's some good stuff. True. What, what else should I, what else should I be asking you about this? I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm fascinated. I'm learning here. I'm jotting down notes. So. Yeah. So I'll be a little bit selfish here and I'll, and I'll, I'll say one of the advantages and one of the cool things that, that Facebook provides you. And this kind of dovetails into, you know, one of our, one of our products is called group X. Um, it's a Google Chrome extension that works along in the background and your Facebook groups. So the whole idea of leveraging a Facebook group is to build relationships with those members that become um, part of your group. And if you've got business interests, it's probably the number one goal that you should have outside of those relationships is to develop contact information, right? So build an email list from your group. Well, Facebook has a feature in there where you can filter people out um, while at the same time uh, really building out uh, data about your group in, in the first place. And Facebook gives you the ability to ask three questions of anyone that joins your group. Now, you're not required to answer or ask these questions um, at all, you know, for um, you know, to run a Facebook group. However, it's our recommendation that you do, that you, you ask these, ask, you basically get the three genie questions. You have the ability to ask three questions of people that join your group. And at least one of those questions, our recommendation is that you ask for an email address. Well, think of it as all these softwares out there. You've got some amazing softwares out there. You know, our good friend, uh, Russell Brunson, who runs uh, ClickFunnels. You've got all these other amazing amazing things and opportunities out there. You've got, you know, WordPress, you know, you've got landing pages. And one of the strategies a lot of businesses use is a lead magnet, right? They, they have a landing page where people land on the page and if they're trying to promote themselves and their business, they typically use a landing page uh, type of software, whether it's, you know, one that we just mentioned or another one that's out there. And they'll typically give away a free white paper or chapter of a book or uh, an infographic or maybe access to a free course or something like that in exchange for a name and an email address or at the very least an email address. Well, that technology and that experience has been so pervasive that a lot of people, they make that decision on whether or not that group with that, that, that particular, uh, that particular lead magnet is going to be enough for them to become a conversion, right? A conversion, meaning they hand over their email address. Well, the email address is heavily guarded by a lot of people these days. They just don't, they, they're inundated by emails every single day. If I look down at my, my, uh, my mobile device here, I've got, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy. I've got, you know, nearly 60,000 unread emails across all these different, you know, and I'm probably one of the worst offenders that are out there, but I hear there's a lot of other people that just can't get to inbox zero. So, you know, they're always opting in for things and they're being spanned by people. They're, you know, lists are being shared and all that kind of stuff. Well, Facebook allows you to ask, ask these three questions. And again, as we mentioned, there's nothing particularly uh, frightening about a Facebook group you can also do the exact same thing without having the expense of hosting a website or, you know, uh, one of these, uh, 
funnel builders or something like that. These can be very expensive, hundreds of dollars a month, thousands of dollars a year in expense. Well, Facebook is free and a Facebook group is free to run. Well, if you ask these three questions, you can say, hey, well, if you give me your email address, I'm, not only are you going to get access to this amazing group filled with local businesses or filled with whatever the group is filled with, right, those types of members, well, we're also going to give you this free paper, or we're going to give you a free course or something like something along those lines. Well, the whole, the whole idea behind the Facebook group is to develop those relationships. You can ask, ask other questions, like, for example, in the local group that we at, we that we run, we run, uh, we ask, you know, not only for their email address, but we ask them specifically about them and their business. So where is your business located? And who is your ideal customer and client? So if we come across a referral, we know how, you know, who the best fit is for you. And then what we do is we actually create a directory out of everybody that comes into our group. And now we've got this resource say, Hey, somebody, somebody just asked me about, um, you know, who provides group insurance or something like that. I can go down my list and see who that is and give them a referral. When was the last time your business got a referral? You probably felt pretty good. Uh, so the intrinsic benefit of using this extension, um, well, the, the, using those three questions is that you're getting, you're gaining a bunch of data from people that are joining your group. So not only you're getting their Facebook user uh, ID, they're, when they joined, and you're able to connect with these individuals, you know, as as friends, they get to see more of your stuff and, uh, you know, more of your posts inside your group, if you connect with them as, as friends inside the group. Um, so that's, that's basically a, a, a feature with inside groups that not a lot of people understand and realize that's there. So what our extension does, Group X, is it takes that and puts it, uh, it securely uh, grabs that information of everyone that you approve into your group, puts it into a dashboard, and then automates the follow-up process by wh whatever autoresponder that you might use. So for example, if you join my group, and I approved you, it would take that information, put it into a dashboard, and then start the follow-up process by active campaign, right? We would do this follow-up and say, hey, Gary, welcome to the group. And then it sets out a sequence where you start to get indoctrinated and we start to communicate with you, let you know about the cool things that are happening inside the group, how to best take advantage of it. Here's the opportunity for you to promote your business and what you're doing inside the group. And that's all done automatically. Uh, we tie into a software out there. It's called Bonjoro, which is really, really cool. If you're not familiar with it or your listeners aren't familiar with it, um, this software allows you to send video messages to people that you capture email addresses from. So the way that we used to use it in the past is if we went to like a local networking event and we met at say a chamber of commerce, chamber of commerce event or something like that, and I got your business card. I would take that information, put it into Bonjuro. I would hold up my mobile device. I would record a, a brief message. Hey Gary, it's Drew. We met at the chamber of commerce. I just wanted to uh, see if we could schedule a time to connect for coffee, learn more about your business and how I can refer more business to you as opposed to most people where they take a stack of business cards from, from the local event and it, they, they plop it down into your desk and they'd never do anything with it again. Well, we integrate with this and it sets in a chain of events where we actually uh, send out one of these messages to everybody that joins our group that gets approved into, inside, inside the group, which is a different experience than what, what most people experience when they join a Facebook group. Imagine getting a, a message, a video message, uh, you know, a series of message in, in your email address, and then also a video message in the background from me saying, hey, it's Drew from such and such Facebook group. Just wanted to uh, welcome you to the group. And listen, I want you to feel privileged to go out there and introduce yourself inside the group, promote whatever it is that you want. We've got perfect, you know, some, uh, we've got meme Mondays and promotional Tuesdays and stuff like that. Feel free to, uh, to go wild. Listen, I'm going to be reaching out to you. I would love to feature you inside the group with an interview. Uh, let's get on the, on the calendar for next week or two weeks from now, right? Wow. Like you get that inside of your email, inside an email and you get that inside uh, a Facebook messenger and you get it inside your email. Now all of a sudden you really, really feel welcome inside this group you're probably going to start that relationship off a little bit better than what most people do where they just hit approve and you're a new member and you're left to your own vice, uh, you know, vices to go out and try to figure out what this group is all about and how to most, you know, provide value to it or what you can extract from the group and that sort of thing. Um, group X in the background more or less facilitates and automates the ability for group owners 
to build email lists and then follow up with them in such a, such a way that it's almost impossible not to have a relationship. Even if it's not transactional at first, uh, at least you become very, very keenly aware of who that group owner is uh, uh, very, very quickly. And uh, yeah, the relationships start to flourish thereafter. That's a, that's a really clever one. I, I, I want to join your group now just to see what that's like. <laughs> what uh, Do you mind sharing what the name of your group is? Yeah, it's called Delicious Local Marketing Hacks. Delicious Local Marketing Hacks. We will put that in the, the show notes for anyone who wants to check that out. So you said this extension, this is uh, at groupx.io, if somebody wanted to take a look at what that was like as well. Yeah, we've got a dollar trial. They can go out there and try it out. And I think for the cost of it, just transparently, you know, for the unlimited version of it, it's 99 bucks a year. Very cheap in in the in the terms of uh, software world, uh, but on the other side, if you start to leverage this strategically, um, you can develop relationships very very quickly. If you're looking for a strategy, you're looking a way to really launch something and be able to connect with businesses. You might as well automate the process in the background. Of course, all this stuff that we just talked about can be done manually. But what we have found is, as you start to build groups up, you know to a thousand, two thousand, three. Some of these groups get to 30, 40, 50,000 people, a hundred thousand people. Copying and pasting that into a spreadsheet is maddening. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you uh, like automation, you just want the easy button, Group X is the way to go about doing it. So we, we do have like a dollar trial, it gives you know, what, seven or 14 days or something like that. You'll very quickly understand where the value is of the Facebook group and the data that this extracts out of it for you. We made it purposefully, we made it cheap, uh, unlimited version, essentially a hundred bucks a year and you're done. Well, that's great. Well, this is uh, sounds like an, a great kind of Trojan horse strategy to kind of sneak below the radar of all the other kind of noise out there to really build relationships with people and be the de facto expert in whatever community you're trying to build with whatever business owner you're trying to connect with instead of, uh, you know, we, I think a lot of our episodes up until now have talked about, well, that very straightforward, go for the jugular prospecting of cold calling, outreach, you know, LinkedIn, those types of things. I really like this one as a way to sneak, sneak, uh, sneak under the radar there and, and come in and, well, just be the expert for them that they reach out to instead and say, can you help me, please? That's the goal. That is the goal. And hopefully, you know, the tactic, the strategy, you know, positions you and your listeners a little bit differently. Um, control and, and own the asset of the attention as well as the list that you're building from that attention. And when you've got that, it becomes very interesting. When you've got the list of people that are in the local area, those are the customers that go to the restaurants, those are the customers that go to the doctor's offices and the attorneys and the accountants and all the local, whatever business industry that you're in, if you're looking for the local attention, you can run one of these as a local business. Like, you know, it's kind of, you know, a little bit challenging sometimes for like a chiropractor or something along those lines. The whole concept of running one of these attention engines is that you can still drip your information in and run information about the local area without it having to always be so clinical and so pushy with our information. Control the the attention and then drip your stuff in as a quote unquote sponsor or a relayer of information around that industry. And when you've got an audience of, you know, five, 10, 15,000 people in your local area, that's more than enough business for most people. That's a, I, I love it. I love it. Drew, thanks, uh, thanks so much for sharing. Uh, before we wrap up here, is there anything else I should, uh, you want to leave, you want to leave people with before we uh, wrap this one up? Yeah. So uh, a cool thing that uh, we, we've recently put together, and this is a f- completely free thing uh, for your audience to check out is we put a little newsletter together and uh, we recognize a lot of inf- this local information. We go through uh, some, some information that might be very timely and very interesting for people. So we put a newsletter together. If your audience wants to jump on that, they're more than welcome. And we're always looking for contributors. So if you're listening to this and you want to submit your content to the newsletter itself, we will absolutely feature your content on there. So the best way to find out more information about that is to head over to uh, uh, 
localmarketingweekly.com. Sign up for that, experience it. It's a bunch of curated information, but we're also putting unique information in there. So we're looking for your your stuff, whether you're about LinkedIn or uh, any type of marketing whatsoever, if you're podcasting or business in general, uh, we would love to feature your information, including your podcast. In fact, I've actually queued up a couple of your episodes to be featured in a few of our, uh, our, our weekly newsletters coming out over the next couple of weeks. Comes out every single Friday. Uh, so yeah, go over to uh, localmarketingweekly.com, check that out. And if you want to join our group, it's completely free. It's filled with a bunch of people uh, that are uh, super smart, probably smarter than we are, uh, you know, by my business partner and I, and we're always talking about interesting things that are getting results for businesses. You actually see us with videos going out to local businesses, not talking theory. We actually go into pizza shops. We actually go into gyms and interview these people. And uh, we, have, we have a lot of fun with it. And it's really just about uh, results, getting results for people. So go check that out. Join the group. Uh, I'd love to see you guys in there. Um, you know, just introduce yourself and uh, we'll, we'll put you in front of the group. Sounds great. So localmarketingweekly.com and the name of your group one more time was? Yes, yeah, Delicious Local Marketing Hacks. Delicious Local Marketing Hacks. All of that will be in the show notes uh, if you're driving and can't write that down right now. But uh, um, Drew, thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure having you and I love uh, love this strategy. I think we're going to we're gonna definitely, you know, for us at least, we're going to start implementing some of this stuff too internally. So, Gary, it's been a privilege. Thanks for having me on. Drew, thanks so much. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks for listening to the Pipelineology podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and look forward to seeing you on the next one. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving us a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.